what what do you what are you planning on doing on the 10 year anniversary of September 11th? Because that's I think an extremely monumental time and point right there. And I well, know number one, very- you know, I'm always asked to go to Ground Zero. I've been there for three anniversaries, or is it four? Uh, but I like to let We Are Change and the other groups and architects and engineers be leaders for themselves. And uh, but on the 10th anniversary, I'll most assuredly go to New York because it is so important. Uh, and so that's basically my answer on that point. OK, yes, yes. So I think 10 years, that's going to be like the most important like time out of, since it happened. And last question, who do you think will be the ideal candidate to run with Ron Paul like as far as? His top three, like the vice president and then the secretary of state, and then maybe the um, the person who's in charge of the treasury, and that's it. Boy, that is a really important question. I've thought about that, and uh, you know, I would hope that he would get a true constitutionalist uh, in there. Um, Chuck Baldwin is very well known, is a great patriot, but I don't know if he's well enough known uh, to be a strong uh, or as strong a candidate uh, as Ron Paul. Uh, would need, but but that's a question. We should run a poll uh, or have people email in. In fact, folks, why don't you Twitter? It's uh, twitter.com forward slash real Alex Jones. Your ideas, we'll print a few of those off, uh, and Matt Ryan will remind me in, in the last five minutes of this hour uh, to read some of those recommendations on air. Uh, so Twitter to the real Alex Jones, twitter.com forward slash real Alex Jones. Uh, your ideas. In fact, do that right now, uh, Wilson, if you're able to get on the computer and others, and we'll read uh, 10 or, or so of your ideas. I appreciate uh, the call, Wilson. Good to have you and your family on board. Uh, let's talk to Tyler in California. You're on the air. Oh, hey, Alex. Nice to talk to you again. Good to talk to you. I, yeah, I don't know if you noticed, but our conversation last week sparked quite the uh, debate on YouTube free market. And uh, much like myself, the vast majority realized that you avoided my key points on the issue and started talking about something else. Um, so I'd like to. Well, I don't that. remember the phone call, and I don't know what you're talking about. But um, yeah, let me think. You're the guy that called in and said you're a fan of Zeitgeist. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That I remember now. Like, okay. And so instead of addressing the central points, you okay, I don't know what your about. central point is. Tell me now. Okay, that the free market is. The main main cause behind all of our problems is because it naturally progresses to global monopoly and through cyclical cons- consumption of the resources. That is the true source of no, the environmental people, problems. People, I, no, I, I remember the call now. You've refreshed my memory, and I did respond to everything you said. Okay, We don't have a true free market. We have a oligopoly, a group of cartels using globalism and collectivism to destroy any chance at free market. A free market is I have a right to buy property, and then I have a right to sell it later. Or I have a right to paint an oil painting and then sell it without government being involved. And so I support freedom and the Bill of Rights of Constitution. I do not support uh, a, a computer that is, quote, fair, well, who programs the computer, and reallocates resources and that is what is being proposed by the groups you're promoting. That is a nightmare situation. Uh, so I appreciate your call. Uh, let's go ahead, and I'm going quicker through the calls. Let's go to John in Texas. John, you're on the air. Hi, Alex. Hey, buddy. A while ago, you talked about the, the guy, a guy at the Austin Gun Show that uh, was arrested. And uh, and at the end of his trial, he was found guilty. And at the end of your article, he said he, said he was sent to uh, six months in a, a work camp, a.k.a. labor camp. And I was wondering, uh, uh, you know, we all know who used the labor camp system. That was the Soviet system, and most of the people who went into them labor camps were all innocent, which this guy is. So I was wondering if you ever looked more into that. Well, I mean, we covered the Austin Gun Show. We went over the topics, the issues. They have the uh, military uh, you know, commissions operation, the civilian inmate labor camp program. The Army even runs some of these, and they make you work. And people say, good, make them work. But if you watch the movie The Shawshank Redemption, it's, it's a fiction story, but it's based on real things that have happened. You notice that the warden is making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, and this is set back in the 50s, off of his labor. And his, 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 his crews are building roads, and the local road builder comes to him and says, hey, you're putting me out of business. You know, my people can't compete with slave wages or, or, or no pay. 
And the, and the warden says, well, pay me off then. And so he comes back a week later with a pie with $1,000 on top of it. And so the average prison pay is 15 to 25 cents an hour, depending on the state. The highest is about 25 cents. And then, of course, we can't compete against the illegal aliens or the tens of millions of people in and out of the prison system every few years. On average, about 5 million are in prison at any one time. So, of course, we can't compete with this. So it's a deindustrialization program, and it's legalizing modern slavery. We'll be back. Stay with us. Remain in your houses. The President of the United States has declared martial law under Executive Order 11004. Will they do it? Will they pull the trigger this time? We all pray they stand down, but an engineered crisis seems more likely with each passing day. Think it can't happen here? Executive Order 10990 locks down all highways. Executive Order 10995 seizes control of all media outlets. Executive Order 10998 controls all farms and food supplies. All these executive orders are now cocked, loaded, and waiting for the right crisis. So if you're worried about the possibility of martial law here in America or have questions about how to survive it, go to MartialLawSurvival.com. That's MartialLawSurvival.com. Go to MartialLawSurvival.com right now. You must remain in your houses until your bracelets are scanned. They helped to create a new world order. We are part of a new world order. A new world order based upon collective action. Invisible Empire is a damning indictment of the globalists through their own words and documents. The new world order really is a tool for addressing a new world of possibilities. It means all the world under their control. The United Nations would take over America. The Trilateral Commission would control the world. Invisible Empire chronicles how men of power and influence have worked in stealth for centuries to establish an oppressive world government. I believe, first of all, that we now need nothing short of a world constitution for the global financial system. Global governance with the establishment of the G20. So it's going to be an inner ruling elite and then everyone else. And I got news for you. You're everyone else. Invisible Empire. Secure your copy today at Infowars.com or PrisonPlanet.com or watch it online in the highest quality at PrisonPlanet.tv. When making important financial decisions, you should always know the facts. That's why Midas Resources is willing to pay you to read the facts. Midas Resources, a team of hand-picked financial specialists with decades of financial experience who are ready to provide you with state-of-the-art, up-to-date financial services. Midas Resources offers a host of services and stands behind their products. In fact, if you call and order their free Midas report, Midas Resources will pay you. This detailed report will provide you with financial history on the safest and most profitable areas to invest in. If you read the report, Midas Resources will send you a free Walking Liberty Silver Half Dollar. So what are you waiting for? Get the facts and call Midas Resources toll free at 888-292-2709. That's 888-292-2709. And remember, if you read the Midas report, you'll receive a free Walking Liberty Silver Half Dollar. When you hear the words water purification, what comes to mind? If it's Berkey Water Purification Systems, this message is for you. Did you know that over 60% of municipal water contains fluoride? Had less than two cents per gallon. Berkey water filters purify treated and untreated water, remove dangerous chlorine, fluoride, and contaminants from municipal water. These filters are powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water, making them perfect for rainwater collection systems. From the smallest to the largest systems, BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com has what you need. With your system purchase, you'll receive a shower filter, a fluoride filter, or two sport Berkey bottles absolutely free. BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com would like to offer GCN listeners 5% off all ceramic filter systems and ship all orders over $50 free of charge. Visit BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. That's BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. Or call 1-877-99-BERKEY. That's 1-877-99-BERKEY today. You look like an angel. Walk like an angel. Talk like an angel. But I got... Thank you for joining us. Coming up, Ron Paul, 
starts to seriously hint that he's going to run for president. And he quotes the same reasons that I've stated, that you can bet if he's in good health, he is going to run. He is 74 years old, but he's in great shape. Exercises every day. That is coming up amongst all the other important news that we're going to be covering. But let's continue to quickly go to your phone calls. Mike in California, you're on the air. God bless. How are you doing, Mr. Jones? I'm doing all right. What's on your mind? I'll be concise, sir. Uh, two ideas. Uh, a, one, on the voting process, because it's a secret ballot, so it's pretty easy to manipulate. You know, all of a sudden, gee, Barack Obama won, and so did all the incumbents. I would personally not have a problem with taking a photograph with my phone and send, having everybody, you know, sign and date it and send it in to a central counting location like even you guys. So if all of a sudden Ron Paul doesn't win, but you guys got 500,000 votes for him or whatever, then you can substantiate, hey, this has been gimmicked and uh, these be recounted. There's a fraud happening. The other recommendation I got is to simply circumvent all this uh, federal crap going on with Arizona and the rest of us. Because I'm in California. I'm only 90 miles from San Diego. It, would, it We got a pretty good flood of problems up here, too. If every state from Florida to California were to just say, you know what, screw it, we're going to succeed, then all of a sudden the federal jurisdiction would not apply. We would have the right and the le legitimacy to enforce our own borders without any federal circumvention. And I wouldn't be surprised that at all. The problem with there. California is a lot of the people there want it to be Mexico, so it probably will secede down the road and become part of Mexico. That's part of the La Reconquista, La Invasora. But I, interesting points, Mike. I appreciate your call. Eric in Wisconsin, you're on the air. Hey, how you doing, Alex? Good. Hey, I am proud to announce that I was part of the movement yesterday. Um, myself, Kevin Barrett, um, Tom Spellman from Architects and Engineers for 9-11, Matthew Haas and Lou Stelzenberg, we all went to uh, our representative Tammy Baldwin's office and handed them uh, and their representatives the information from Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. So I'm, I'm, I'm just proud to announce that I'm part of the movement. And uh, if there's anybody listening that's from the Wisconsin area that is in uh, Tammy Baldwin's district, uh, feel free to give her a call. Uh, phone number 608-258-9800. Sir, sir, I appreciate your call, but I have a rule. We can't, and I think you're a good caller and a nice guy, and I commend what you're doing. But we, if people want to give numbers out, you've got to say who it is. We've got to look it up and give it out ourselves. Because if I start letting everybody, the trolls will call in and give out fake numbers to some little old lady to try to cause us problems. That's a talk radio rule. But did you have anything else you wanted to add, Eric? Okay, he's gone. I Duna in Indiana. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hello, Alex. I felt obliged to uh, make a comment about people wearing the, the United States flag on their clothes. When I was uh, in the 60s, when I was in grade school, we learned in Girl Scouts that when you treat the flag reverently, as you do um, religious symbols also, you don't wear the flag as an article of clothing. Uh, this changed in the 70s with some of the radicals, but for many old, uh, people, especially older people and foreigners who see Americans wearing their flag, it looks more like the Americans don't care about America when they uh, desecrate the flag. By but you understand it. it's, their, it's their free speech right to wear the American flag. I do understand. Because we don't worship the flag. We, we are reverent of the flag because it represents the Bill of Rights and Constitution. See, they don't get mad. There's not people freaking out about the Bill of Rights and Constitution being f flushed down the commode. It, it then becomes just an obsession about the flag itself. When, when people uh, do actions that can be symbolic, and the flag is very symbolic, uh, it seems to me that they should be more careful about what actions they choose to take because when the actions are interpreted wrongly by foreigners or by older people like me, it is offensive to us. It, it still offends me to see people wearing the flag on their clothes. I don't say anything well, to them. Well, what about the military? They've got an American flag on their shoulder. But that's not the same thing. When you, when you wear it as a badge that you are working for the United States, it's one thing. When you wear it on a seat of your pants or on a, on a T-shirt and you... and uh, it's in an, in an inappropriate What about place? red, white, and blue uh, napkins at 4th of July? The point is, Alex, that it's a symbol, and you and a person has to be aware of the, sim, uh, the symbolic actions when he does Sure, that. sure, but I mean, do you agree with people's right, though, to burn the flag? Uh, if, it, if it's legal, I agree with it, yes. Well, I mean, but, but, but they shouldn't make a law making it illegal just because a democracy wants it, two wolves and a sheep voting on dinner. On what's for dinner? I mean, I don't I like burning. To, I don't like burning the American flag, but but I mean, it's their right to do it, or I lose my right. I have to agree, but you have to understand that people 